In this lab, we're going to talk about attributes and KPIs. So I'm going to show you how to work with attributes. We're going to create an attribute package based off a default set. I'll show you how to designate a metric as a KPI, configure the KPI, and then we'll assign an attribute package to an application or a resource. So with that, let's go ahead and let's jump to the lab. So once again, back into the lab, into the custom UI. And now to configure these attribute packages, we'll go over to environment, configuration, attribute packages. There it is. So here's the thing on these to start. It's sorted by the adapter and then the resource kind. So if you want to put it on, you know, mess with the attributes or metrics from a VM, you would choose the VMware adapter and then under resources you would choose a virtual machine. If you want to create one and apply it to an application, kind of a, the whole application container, you would do container and then application. So you do need to pick the right one. If you do this, like I'm going to do in the demo here, uh, VMware adapter and virtual machine, you cannot apply that to an app or to a data store. It just doesn't show up in the list when you get to pick the attribute package for that object. So just look at it make sure you're using the right one. Here are the two def well, I won't say defaults. Here are the two that are created when you install VCOPS. One is called default and one is called all. And uh, it, I believe all the objects use all on installation. So you can just edit or change that one. And the way that I normally do this is I copy it. So you can use this to clone it. That way I'm not changing the original one uh, package. And also, because if you change this, it's going to change it to everything that's currently being applied to. If you want to do that, great. Uh, but if you want to create a different one and only apply it to a subset of objects, I suggest you clone it. So highlight, click the little edit pencil one here, and you'll see a couple of things. So up at the top, it's got the adapter kind, resource kind, package name, and a collection interval. This is the number of minutes that it goes between collecting these attributes. So by default, it's five. You can change it to 10, change it to 20, whatever you want it to be, but that's when it goes and collects this data. Then you've got your folders here to the left, and you'll see different icons. And I'll give you a hint. If you hover over the little information bullet here, it'll show you what those icons mean. So the little plus we see is at least one attribute is selected, and none are key performance indicators. But you can see this, how it'll show them whether some are KPIs and some are not. And it also shows you that some are HTs or hard thresholds. So it's just a quick and easy way. So as an example, let me go down and I'll do CPU usage because that's a pretty good one. And we will look at usage percentage. So what you see is pretty much the same thing on all of these here to the right. It's going to tell you, give you a description, tell you which one you've chosen, and then you've got some options. So first of all, you can select these so that if you go above or below the dynamic threshold created by the analytics engine, it'll be a KPI kind of a fault. So if you want to make the DTs, the dynamic thresholds, kind of your key performance indicators, you simply check these boxes. You can go above, you can go below, you can go both. It's up to you. You know, in this way, if my dynamic threshold for the VM that I apply this to says that, you know, this time of day, it should be somewhere between 30 and 50% CPU, and we hit 60, then it will flag it as a KPI and it'll be a KPI exceeded alert and you you know as we talk about in the alerts lesson you'll get different alerts for that. Under advanced click over here I always try to click this but it's a little arrow to the right you've got a few things here. First of all what type of dynamic threshold do you want to create for this? Leave it on automatic. <laughs> reason I say that is you've got a couple options here. I've yet to see any documentation from VMware on why, when, or how you would really want to change these. So leave that as default. Looking at this, you can then create your own hard or your custom thresholds, I guess we'll say. So you can set a criticality level. You can set a threshold operator, so greater than, and then a compare value. So let's say we want to say, look, if CPU usage is above 80% for 10 minutes, the wait cycle is how long do you want to see it exceeded, and it's in number of collection cycles. So two cycles times five minutes is 10 minutes. So if it sits there for at least 10 minutes, then it's going to flag this. 
and then you can do a cancel cycle. So if you want to say, look, don't get rid of this alert or clear this alert until it's good and back within its threshold for 10 minutes, you do 2 times 5 is 10. Maybe you're okay with 5 minutes, whatever. That's what you set. And what you then can do is say, look, this is my hard threshold. So this is not dynamic threshold, this is my hard threshold. And if you exceed this or violate this, it's a KPI. And you signify that by checking that box. Real simple. And you can have them for different criticality levels. Info is this, warning is that, and you just go through and you set all these you know, as you see fit. And then you can say any violation of these is a KPI. And then you can say which criticality level does it become a KPI. So maybe you know don't check that. But instead you say, look, when it hits warning status, that's when we're, it's a KPI exception and we need to trigger a fault or an alert on that. So that's how you go through. And you have to do these basically metrics by metrics and attribute by attribute and configure these however you want them. And that's what I mean when I talk about how you need to know your applications and understand what you're looking for. You may want to do it on disk latency. You may have an adapter that pulls in database information. You want to do it on database transactions, whatever. This is how you come in and designate things as KPIs, either against a dynamic threshold or a hard threshold, and that's how you pick and choose and, and create those. So now let me show you how to apply this. So we created this package. Let's assume we created some KPIs. We hit OK. Then we'll go back up to Environment, Environment Overview, and this screen is probably familiar. We've been here before. And then you're going to pick which resource that you want to apply it to. Now remember, we just did one for VMs, VM attributes, so we've got to apply it to VM. To drive that point home, let's go back to resource kinds, applications, all of them, demo app, and we don't get to pick the one we created because it's the wrong kind of resource. But if I go down to virtual machines, all, let it redraw, uh, pick my little media machine here, edit, attribute package, we can now pick the one that we just created. Over here on the right, you can add a new one, and it basically starts you with a default, or you can edit the chosen one and then come in here and make any changes, but it takes you back to where we were just a minute ago, and then you click OK. And now if we look, you'll actually see it. It's split out. You can see it created, put this one in a different list because it's a different attribute package. Uh, and that's how you apply it. So now it's going to be collecting data and looking at KPIs using that attribute package we just created against the media XP here. And so, you know, let me deselect all these. There we go just for the media XP system because that's the only one we applied it to and you can go apply that to as many as you want and they will then take up those attributes and those metrics so again you have to know your apps you have to know what you want to use have to know what you want to set for KPIs and if you want to set hard thresholds you have to decide which thresholds and it, what is the minimum or maximum levels that you want to set